Wow. <laughs> it's time for some more Styropyro. Specifically, the 100% invisible IR depth laser. Infrared lasers are used in nuclear engineering, but not for that purpose. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see this. Right here I have a camera that's been modified so that it shoots an infrared. Okay. Now the only thing that's different about it is that its IR blocking filter was replaced with one that only lets IR light through. Now for such a simple Interesting. Okay. modification, the effect is actually really crazy. This is what I look like on an IR camera. My skin is pastier than normal, the patterns <laughs> of my normal. shirt disappeared, and my eyes are black and look slightly possessed. Now what else can I do with the camera? Well for one, anything with an IR transmitter in it, like this uh, TV remote here, is going to look really bright on the camera, even though it's actually invisible to our sure. eyes. Infrared light can shoot through a lot of materials that we normally consider opaque. For example, here I have a glass of coke. Now to our eyes it looks dark because it doesn't let much visible light through. But on the IR camera, you can see right through it. That's cool. And that's looking. because it's basically transparent to shortwave IR. And infrared's just radiation, electromagnetic radiation, just above the wavelength for the visible spectrum. Visible spectrums between 400 and 700 nanometers, or as small as 700 nanometers, so just outside of the visual spectrum, all the way up to a millimeter, which is a million nanometers. Pretty cool, right? Now you guys know how it goes on this channel. I'm not just going to sit around and give you fluff about infrared photography. The only way I can have fun with this thing is if I build some giant IR lasers. Of course. A surprisingly simple way to make a powerful IR laser <clears throat> is actually by just tearing down a green laser pointer. Now the reason being is that most green laser pointers don't actually have a green laser diode inside. Instead it uses an infrared laser that pumps a set of crystals to make green light. Now lucky for us, this process is not very efficient. That. That's so cool. there has to be a powerful IR laser inside for this to work. Now before I start tearing this thing apart, I should point out that the experiments that were done in this video were done completely for educational purposes. And in fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd almost certainly get killed or at Love least permanently disclaimer. maimed. So yeah, please don't try this at home. Green laser pointers have a lot of fragile components inside, so it's important that they're handled with care. Now actually disassembling this thing turned out to be really difficult as every I love the juxtaposition of handle with care of then, you know, casually rub power tool up against it. <laughs> thing was either glued or permanently pressed into place. I know honestly it's hard not to use swear words to describe the process of taking it apart. Anyways, at the expense of the laser pointer casing, I was able to remove the laser module. Now the orthovanadate and KTP crystals used to generate green light sit right on top of that IR laser diode. Like so removing that. these exposes the raw IR output. On my normal camera, this output shows up as a very dim pink. And now if I was dumb enough to look at it with my own eyes, I'd actually see a faint red glow. But with the IR camera, it's obvious that it's actually very powerful. I'm glad he mentioned the whole dumb enough to look at with your own eyes. Use appropriate laser goggles specifically for IR band lasers. Laser goggles have different optical density depending on what type of laser you're working with, so be sure to read the label of your goggles to make sure they cover things in the infrared spectrum. Depending on how powerful this thing's going to be, you're probably going to want to have limit the amount of exposed skin you have, so wearing long sleeves, gloves. For high power ones, you're going to want to wear a face shield, especially if th this is going to be done in an environment where the laser could potentially scatter, bounce off of certain surfaces. A lot of lab settings using these typically involve a lot of non-reflective surfaces or matte finish surfaces just to avoid unnecessary scattering. Powerful. It lights up my entire desk with IR light. But in order to do anything fun with it, I need to focus the output with a lens. Sure. Instead of trying to painstakingly mount a tiny lens over the laser diode at just the right distance, I found it easier to just remove the laser diode and stick in a module with an adjustable threaded lens mount. The finished product is actually really scary. Not only <laughs> is it sure. invisible, but can still blind in a fraction of a second. And that's why I wear laser goggles when I'm working with it. Thank you. Now to those of my viewers out there who are interested in experimenting around with lasers, a powerful IR laser should not be your first project. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe start with one that you can actually see. This laser looks really cool on the IR camera. And plus with the adjustable lens mount, I can focus the beam to a tiny spot so it can burn things. Mm. A match lights instantly when it's placed inside the focal point of the beam. And now I can also cut through thin dark plastic with ease. Alright, I gotta do it. Uh, I gotta stick my hand in the exactly beam to see what, what happens, see. because what could possibly go wrong? Oh, wow, I don't feel a thing. Now, I figured it wouldn't be bad, but 
I was hoping it would hurt at least just a little bit. Really? You're just pointing? Even at the focal point, I don't feel the tiniest bit of warmth. I guess my flesh is just super transparent to the shortwave IR wavelength. Seeing the use of IR lasers in material analysis, something called laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. Basically, you shine an IR laser at something, it creates a localized plasma. And the plasma emits light at characteristic wavelengths, and by that I mean wavelengths that are specific to what type of material is in, say, an unknown substance. And then you can analyze those di that different spectrum of light to see what's in it. This is critical for checking alloys, shielding, its material properties, to test the purity of it. Now, despite using the words laser and plasma, it's actually non-destructive, which is cool. And after all, if you're concerned about something being radioactive and you're not sure, well, it's probably not the best idea to cut it or grind it up before knowing what it is and knowing what the hazards are. So that's one advantage of this. Now notice that when the beam is going through my hand, it actually lights up all of my Look veins so they're that. clearly visible. Wow. That is so amazing. All right, now I'm bored. Now it's not like this thing isn't powerful. I mean, it definitely is. I mean, come on, it doesn't even reach the class for danger rating. I feel oh, like yeah, I need something on. that's at least 100 times stronger. And now, unfortunately, a giant portable eye or death ray isn't just something I can go and buy online. So I guess this means I have to build one myself. <laughs> now, if, it, if you could, where would you buy it online anyway? One of the uh, fun parts about designing a laser like this is that I'm completely at the mercy of what parts I can find cheaply on eBay. Now, lucky for me, high-tech startups are constantly failing, and militaries around the world are always getting rid of old laser hardware. That means there's always going to be a constant supply of weapons-grade laser parts in the surplus market. Say weapons -grade. <laughs> I had my heart set on using a monster fiber-coupled IR laser array on the build, but buying one of these things new costs more than a brand new car. But wow. with a little bit of luck, yeah. I was able to score this used but working 25-watt unit. For the housing, I just started with this heat sink, and just kind of went at it with a hacksaw drill and Dremel. And like most things in my life, I didn't actually plan anything out before diving right in, and just started cutting things and bolting stuff into place until it seemed somewhat acceptable. Sounds good. I ended up using a pipe for the handle, and then wired in a switch to act as a trigger. Before bolting down the laser array, I added some arctic silver to increase heat transfer from the laser. Now I really should have used indium foil for this, but I won't be running this thing for very long, so this shouldn't be an issue. Coming up with an efficient driver that can Bring feed the, the laser a whopping 40 amps at just 2 volts turned out to be quite the challenge. But then I saw a video by Marco Reps of him building the exact driver that I needed. Next power supply is a constant current source for the laser module. I got it from someone who has a few other powerful laser sources, and he wants me to design and assemble two universal constant current drivers. Here's a naive approach. Voice. It's funny because it's like my that. naive approach would have been a giant pile of linear regulators. So I'm really happy that I saw his video. And yeah, I ended up building a driver based on his design. It'll work flawlessly, so a big thank you to him. In fact, you should all go check out his channel. He makes tons of cool videos on things like robotics and lasers, and I'll be sure to put a awesome. link in the description of this video. On the optic side of things, I needed something to tame the rapidly diverging beam from the fiber. I ended up using some nice few silica lenses from Esco Optics. Now these things are rated to handle the high power laser beam without exploding. I stuck the lenses in an adjustable telescope mount that I made from PVC pipe. Oh, that looks and here amazing. is the terrifying finished product. I added a thermometer here so I can keep an eye on the laser diode stem. I also added some indicator LEDs, one that lights up when the laser's armed, and the other one when the laser's firing. That's probably good to have, considering the actual laser itself is invisible. Another nuclear application you can use a crazy IR laser for Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy. Basically, rather than making a plasma, you just shine your infrared laser to measure man molecular vibrations. So this one's even less destructive than LIBS, because you're not making a plasma, you're not even putting anything on it. However, it's less effective against solids. It's mainly used to detect contaminants in liquids and gases. Anyway, enough with this technical junk. Let's test this thing out. Can you see me all right? Oh wait, let me turn on my giant laser. Now I built the mask that I'm wearing oh, wow. by fitting laser goggles into a welding helmet. I just want to make sure there is no chance of any stray light making it into my goggles. Good, yeah, he's going even heavier than a face shield, which is nice. Goggles. Now the funny thing is that I can't see this light at all. It's completely invisible to me. The only reason I know it's on is from this indicator light I stuck on it. But that being that said, on. I'm sure it looks like I'm holding a bolt of lightning on the IR camera. That's pretty crazy to me. <laughs> looks like a crazy flashlight. On my normal camera, the beam looks really weak, but obviously this isn't actually the case. Yeah. <laughs> now what else can I do with this giant laser? How about triggering a 100,000 volt spark gap? 
Here I have a very high voltage DC power supply. You would not want to try to break into this guy's house. It'll hit you with something that you literally won't see coming. When the electrodes are close enough, the spark easily jumps the gap. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> but when they're separated enough, the electric field is too weak for total breakdown. Instead, just a small amount of current finds its way through the cardboard. To hit the matches. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Now if I use the laser to light the matches yes. in between the electrodes, the arc can jump the gap again. Ready? Wow! <laughs> a laser fire. A laser electrical fire. This works because That's... the flame generates conductive ions that makes the perceived gap between the electrodes That is smaller. beautiful. So I'm sure there's also an avalanche effect from the extreme field grabbing charged particles and Smashing them into neutral molecules in the air to make even more ions. I mean, that's a similar general concept to, say, a nuclear chain reaction in a nuclear power plant. Albeit we're dealing with very different mechanics. Lasers using stimulated emission, essentially something being pumped into an excited energy state, which then stimulates other atoms, getting them to pump higher and release more photons. And it continues until you're depleted of excited atoms, or you get to a enough to, or you get enough that it's a steady state op output, which is kind of like criticality in a nuclear power plant. Basically, you have a chain reaction going and it reaches an equilibrium where its power level is constant. Though, excited photons versus splitting atoms, again, different processes, but it's kind of cool just to see exponential growth and then reaching a steady state. That is beautiful. Laser popcorn. Here's another cool trick. The plastic tubes here are filled with strontium illuminate glow powder. When I light the pile of flash powder below with the laser, it energizes the illuminate so it glows. Oh wow. Now when I shine the IR laser at the powder, Love glowy it glows things. much brighter. In fact, I can actually see the laser spot through the goggles this way. This is actually how those IR visualizer cards work. Now if it weren't for the extreme blinding hazard, this thing would also function as basically the world's best night vision flashlight. <laughs> This thing has the potential to light up things for miles, but that wouldn't exactly be safe or legal. No, um, so I guess I'm just going to have to use this thing for blowing up stuff at home. Well, that's about all of the useful things this laser can do. Now let's see what this thing can destroy. That. You could conceivably use powerful enough of these to make a nuclear fusion reactor. Using IR lasers to compress deuterium-tritium fusion pellet to extreme levels of density. Now. Just one isn't going to cut it. You need to basically surround it with them to crush it in from every side to achieve said extreme density, extreme pressure, and extreme temperature and confinement time in order to induce nuclear fusion. The National Ignition Facility uses just that. Granted, it uses a lot more and generally bigger lasers than the one you see in this video, but same basic tool. your birthday candles. I kind of like the ones where it's not in the IR camera because it just looks so tiny like it's not even going to do anything and then voom. <laughs> That's cool too though. Lack of hand PPE, just, I know he's disappointed it didn't hurt himself, but that's just, that's different for me. <laughs> that was a 
Atenção! Laser fireworks. All right, so that's about it for this video. That was amazing. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.